Well, there is the breakaway at 25 kilometres to go and the peloton running more than a minute back. We'll start the clock on the banners there and we'll get a bit more accurate time check. This breakaway formed some 27 riders getting clear and the riders in that break are under pressure. There's one or two passengers, but as we go further up the road, you see riders sprinting off the front all of the time. Absolute chaos on the front end of that breakaway group, but now we've got a, a rather more interesting position here because Marco Velo has been joined by Giovanni Lombardi. Just a little bit further back, there's another man trying to make the group, the group at the front here, Vladimir Duma. We talked about him earlier as being a rider who at one stage had been the only finisher in the Giro d'Italia for the Panaria team a couple of years ago. If he makes the group, then I think we're looking at a very sensible, organised group here who stand a great chance of surviving. Grazie. Well, it looks like the uh, European trophy down there, which of course Milan won uh, in great festivity. I think it was about 48 hours ago that game was on. So. Uh, as we continue now with the Giro d'Italia, the crowds are big here, and I think we're passing through the town here of a Bulga Gro Grasso. I hope I got that right, Bob. Yes, yes, indeed. There's Giovanni Lombardi. You can see the position on the bike. The riders have come way forward on the saddle. They're what we used to call tipping it when you're right at the tip of the saddle, trying to get every every micron of power into the pedal. Marco Velo is really flying down the road. Lombardi having a very hard time getting across to him. He's going to need to sit on for a while, catch his breath so he can pull through to the end. Well, it's what we in English call on the rivet, Bob, because in fact in the old days when they had leather saddles, the leather was held together by brass rivets and there was a huge big rivet right on the front end of the saddle. So if you were on the rivet, you were right on the tip of the saddle and it's usually an indication that you really are pushing yourself to the absolute maximum. This is the chase group just behind. Yeah, I just saw Scott Sunderland's made this split. Now, there's a man who will be a great candidate for a finish from a group like this. Well, I tell you what, a lot of very interesting bike riders have made the junction here, but look at this time gap. Marco Velo and Giovanni Lombardi fill back to that group have got an advantage of a minute and 40 seconds. So that is really quite remarkable. Caught in the middle, there are lots of many different groups that are forming, but I tell you what, Everyone here today has thrown caution to the wind on the last road stage of the Giro d'Italia. Probably just as well, Paul, because you've had a look at the finish and it's not uh, an easy approach to the line, is it? It's a dodgy finish again. It's, uh, I think, what we'll have to dub a Giro d'Italia finish because with around about 1.2 kilometres to go, there's a nice little traffic circle that the riders have to negotiate. At 800 metres to go, there's a nice bend to the left-hand side and then just when you think it's going to straighten up, there's a very sharp right-hand turn, which is almost a U-turn. And if you remember, that is the crash. So that's very similar to the finish we saw a couple of weeks ago when Mario Cipollini went down on the ground so let's hope that uh, it is a breakaway situation today because that would make it a lot safer for the bike riders left in the Giro d'Italia. So approximately 27 riders are ahead of the peloton but there's two riders very much in the lead and here they are Marco Velo, Giovanni Lombardi, Velo and uh, knows the sprinting ability of Giovanni Lombardi so he doesn't want to carry him all the way to the finish because otherwise he's only looking at second place and for that reason this escape may not work but the others are still just in touch, seconds behind, and the spread is a minute 40. Well, for the moment, as far as Marco Velo is concerned, uh, I think second is better than losing out and finishing in a large group of 27 riders. So he will work for an, a long time, I think, with Lombardi to see if they can establish a good, consistent gap over this group that is chasing them right now, which is down to 25 riders with some huge names in there. The big advantage they got, Bob, is this group, I think, is a little bit too big to be manageable. They're at 15 seconds right now. We saw Marco Pantani asking his teammate Gasparoni to keep turning very hard, close this gap down to our two leaders and there's three riders in between getting across I think the Alessio rider Denny Lungi was amongst those three trying to get across they're right behind our two leaders and it's uh, Duma and uh, the Alessio rider these are three riders following the two in the front and uh, you can see Scott Sunderland there at the front trying to get across to them that is a great ride by him well, Scott's had a fantastic tour, really, when you think he hadn't ridden a major tour for uh, about eight or nine years, I would say, because he's been involved in some pretty serious accidents throughout his professional career, and he was hoping, Phil, to try and ride himself into the top 20. He's just outside the top 20 right now, but I have to say, I've been very impressed with his performances on the mountain passes. I quite agree. He's 23rd overall. If this breakaway was to get in by about... Uh, four or five minutes over the main field and he probably would just pierce the top 20 because Aitor Gonzalez is 20th in the classification. 
and Mazzolini at the moment has done enough with the time gap over the field uh, to secure 10th place in the race over Vladimir Belli and to be a top 10 finisher I think is rather nicer than finishing 11th isn't it? Absolutely and that's something he will be uh, thinking about in the back of his mind. There still is the time trial to come tomorrow but look Bob at how fast those last five kilometres have gone by. As you would say I think in your terminology these guys are hauling. They are flying down the road. We just saw the banner for 30 k's ago. The riders started breaking up, breaking away. The, ra the race started to split up. Then we saw 25 kilometers to go just moments after that and now boom they're into the 20 kilometers to go banner. Here's the three chasers Sunderland, Lungi and Duma trying to get up to terms with uh, with um, Lombardi and Marco Velo on the front of the bike race but those two riders the Domino Vacanze and the Fossil Bartolo team one of only the seven teams to win a stage so far in this Giro d'Italia Domino Vacanze coming up with two by Cipollini and eight so far by Fossil Bartolo both of these teams now looking to add to their total well, the rest of the group are not really that far behind for the moment. Uh, still hovering at around 15 to 20 seconds. But it really is, Phil, amazing the way the front end of this chase group is fractioning all of the time with the gaps really starting to appear. Let's not forget these guys have been in this bike race for three weeks right now and they're trying to get every last bit of energy out of their bodies because for many of them tomorrow will be a parade as they ride into Milano. Many of them won't try all that hard in the individual time trial. It's only the guys at the top end of the classification who will give it completely full on. But there you can see uh, the Scott Sunderland counter-attack has been caught by the front end of this group, which once again is splitting up. Yeah, but Scott is looking for the move that might give him a great result, an icing on the cake here. But at the moment, it's not happening. This is uh, Miko Ivic, who's on the Alessio team on the front, and now we've got Benucci over to the right of our picture. They're just looking over the shoulder. This isn't a bunch, of course. This is just a split in it and uh, there's still a chance they can go away. They are flat out at the moment, totally committed. The peloton, I don't think, is going to see this breakaway again. Well, this is good for the two attackers right now because we just saw the, the move there as that main field was splitting and coming back together again, and that will give the two attackers a chance to build up their advantage right now. All they need is a couple of slowings down in the front end of this chase group, and all of a sudden they'll find themselves with one minute's advantage. Gianni Farazine also trying to get on terms now. He's in the breakaway. He's trying to leave it behind. Another Italian, but he rides on the German Gerolsteiner team. A lot of racing to come. We won't miss much of it. We'll just take a short break. Come back and join us as we now see possibly the first successful attack that we see. And welcome back, and the pressure very much on now as they come towards the closing kilometres. Still these two rides are clear. First of all, it is Marco Velo who attacked, and joined by the sprinter here. And this is Giovanni Lombardi, and together they are just about holding off a charging, chasing group of some 25 riders. There they are. Well, it's remarkable, this group of 25, Phil, they keep accelerating as fractions of riders go off the front end of the group, and then they're slowing down. Every time they slow down, the two attackers, in fact, extend their advantage over that group. It should now be around about 30 seconds, but it's two minutes back to the pink jersey group of Gilberto Simoni, and I think if the situation remains like that, Gilberto Simoni is not only going to win this bike race on time, he's also going to be the winner on points because all of the points for the moment, Bob, are just disappearing up the road. Yes, absolutely. So we'll see if the Lamprey riders or even the Vini Calderola riders come to the front of the peloton. They're over two minutes behind our two uh, uh, leaders of the bike race and all the points in between the peloton and those two riders of course they will be taking points if they stay away to the finish looks like Marco Pontani now at the front of the second group on the road Marco Velo and Giovanni Lombardi working perfectly well together both of them relaying each other down the road they're probably going about 35 miles an hour now as we come into the final 15 kilometers here pretty soon they're ticking off these kilometers so fast and uh, you can see the, the second group on the road breaking up quite a bit as riders are not willing to cooperate each other. A little bit of a climb that they're on right now. At the top of this climb, we'll see exactly if they're extending their lead or if it's starting to come back. Well, Giovanni Lombardi is really hurting right now. He's not one of the best climbers in the world, but he has kept himself in the bike race, Phil, by being in the right place on all of the mountain passes and making sure that he hasn't been eliminated. Unbelievable the other day, 35 bike riders were eliminated by finishing outside of the time limit. This is the chase group, second group on the road right now, and I think these guys are suffering just about as much as the two riders off the front there. We just get a sign, a quick glimpse of Colombo, the teammate of Giovanni Lombardi but uh, we will get a, a chance to see, Phil, if they are going to survive. You see Lombardi keeps looking down under his arms there. I think he's waiting to, for some help to come from Marco Velo, who right now is looking a lot more comfortable. 
looking across there. In fact, they've both got a chance here. On these long straight sections, you can see them looking back, and it's a chance to sort of advantage they've got over the main group, which is coming up behind them. A quick glimpse there, and I think we saw the sign indicating we're not too far away from the King of the Mountains. It really isn't the King of the Mountains after what most of the bike riders have gone over the last few weeks, but it certainly puts a lot of pain into the legs as we get closer towards the finish. And another good move here, Mazzolini once again looking to ride into the top ten in the overall classification, but Bob, what great form he's got. He is really having a fantastic Giro. He's done an incredible amount of work on the front of the bike race in the mountains for his team leader, Stefano Garcelli. Garcelli in second place now Mazzolini, I think, dropped him on the last climb up the Cascata del Tocci del Giro of this Giro. He uh, finished ahead of him for a few seconds. Might have been well advised to, uh, to uh, wait for his team captain to get him a little bit closer to Popovich, who was attacking. He's trying to get across, but it still is a decent lead that our two, two uh, breakaways have, and Mazzolini is having a fantastic Giro, very powerful. If anybody from that group can get across, it's probably him. He's come to the last few days of Giro in great form. Well, we can have a look at the King of the Mountains uh, situation. If you look at Figueras on the move again here, it's all over. There's only three points available on this last climb for the winner. Gonzalez leading, as you can see, by a nice hefty 22 points. Simone moved into second place yesterday with his uh, third mountain top victory. And Zabaya, who was second, slipped away to third. But that competition is over, although there's one climb still to come. And Gonzalez has led that competition from day one to the finish in Milan. At least that's what he hopes by tomorrow. Mazzolini going it under the banner 15 kilometers to go he's having a very inspired day he really is and he's in fact halved the gap between himself and the two attackers and if he gets to that group it really is going to change the whole physiology of this bike race for the moment these two guys have got the team car of Fasa Bortolo alongside they'll be giving them information explaining just exactly what the the chase group is looking like and uh, as we look here now this is a chance to see Charlie Wigelius he's trying to keep Sergei Honchar I think Phil in the top 10 in the overall classification because uh, these guys have been looking after Honchar, who's had a fairly quiet Giro this year. And there you can see the Ticlamina jersey on the shoulders of Stefano Garzelli, but that's because he's second in the competition, competition which is being led right now by Gilberto Simone. And if the race situation remains, well, then he's going to take that competition too. Big effort there coming now from Scott Sunderland, who's trying to get up on terms with Pozzi down there and Figueras. They, in turn, are trying to catch up with... Uh, with the rider who broke away, Mazzolini, who in turn is trying to catch up with Velo and Lombardi. It's very complicated, isn't it? But nobody is working together here. They're just attacking the bike race and trying to reach the leaders. This is the most intriguing uh, last road race stage of the Giro d'Italia, that is certainly for sure. This is uh, the man that started it on the front. He's a kilometre now from the top of the King of the Mountains. It's only a small climb. As we see these riders approach it, we won't uh, miss any of the action. We'll just slot in some commercials and then come back and we'll bring you the action on the climb. We'll take a break. And the two leaders charging into the Piazza Garibaldi at 12 kilometres to go and that's where they will enact the last hill of this year's Giro d'Italia. Looking at Scott Sunderland here, still trying to bridge across the gap, but it looks as though the power's gone out of those legs. I think he went down to the engine room and asked for some more power, and they said there is no power, so he's decided to sit up and wait for the group, who are still under a serious amount of pressure. Most of that pressure is coming from Marco Pantani's team, and uh, Massimo Codol is the man doing an awful lot of the pacemaking. They're about 500 metres now from the top of this climb here, Phil, at Cantu. We're actually in the, out, in the outskirts of the finishing town. Figueras is one of the men trying to come across here with Eddie Mazzolini and Mazzolini is looking very strong very energetic they're not much more Bob I would say than 15 seconds behind the two men at the front if they make the contact then I think it's race over yes absolutely this if those four get together and go to the finish together it will be very hard for the disorganized chase group to come back across the peloton is a run out of all kinds of steam this only the psycho team down the, this gap and they have no interest in doing that whatsoever just conserving the eight minutes advantage that um, that uh, Simone has over Garcelli and Popovich. Well an unofficial time check Phil I've got it at around about 17 seconds there for the two chasers right now they really need to 
pick up the gas right now if they want to make the junction. They've had a hard chase to try and pull these two riders back. And Bob, I think you know this town square very well. Yes, absolutely. That's very close to where I live in Italy. And the two veterans here of Italian cycling, Velo and Lombardi, being chased by two of the new stars, Mazzolini and Figueres. They would love to get across. If these two riders will sit up, wait for them to come back across, I think you'll have a foursome that will go down to the finish line and Lombardi with the best chance. Lombardi might want Velo to uh, turn off the gas a little bit, make the jump sure with these other three, uh, these other two, excuse me, and then go flat out to the finish because he is the best one, the best sprinter in this group of bike riders, has the best chance at the finish line. Well, Phil, it's about 45 seconds now back to the group of chases with Marco Pantani and the main field themselves are on this final climb of this year's Giro d'Italia. But they'll get a time check, I think still fairly close to a two-minute margin. Well, and that's why Denardi are riding now, because Sergei Gonchar's ninth place overall is in danger of becoming tenth place, so they're going to have to race from that peloton now. Wasn't what they intended at the start of the day, but it's the way that the cards have fallen. These two riders are still clear. Lombardi, who has been the perfect lead-out man for his teammates, not just Cipollini in this tour, and yet has finished in the top three or four himself on occasion, is about to have his best shot at winning a stage for himself. He's got a better chance right now if it stays together as a two-man group as we look to the main field coming over the summit. One minute 46. Uh, I don't think they're going to see any of the chasers yet because we're still just about 12 kilometres to go to the finishing line. Again, Gianni Farazin on the front end of the chase group trying to stir up the pacemaking. But Bob, there's too many guys just sitting on in this group right now. Yes, absolutely. You can see some of the Mercatoni Uno, Uno riders there at the bottom half of the breakaway, including Marco Pantani, who was an early animator. He really raced hard but it was at the wrong moment Lombardi and Velo sensing the right moment and right when he turned off the gas soon they went up the road big group there chasing them about half of the riders sitting on so the other half that are doing the work is very discouraging you don't want to help anybody across to this group and make a big effort unless you have a very good sprinter who's capable of winning the stage so a lot of the uh, power has gone out of the chase group now and these two riders on the other hand totally committed to their chances to get to the finish together and so they are pouring on the coals and flying down to the finish line. This is uh, Giuliano Figueres trying to get on terms. There's Marco Pantani. He's got three teammates in this group as well and he's not using them very effectively because he's allowing this breakaway to stay out front for far too long. Work required now to bring this breakaway back I think and if Figueres and Mazzolini get across that gap I don't think they'll see those leaders. Well, if they get together and it's a four-man group, they will almost certainly survive the day because you can see here, as we go through 10 kilometres ago, just how strong Marco Velo is. He was second at the King of the Mountains points there. Eddie Mezzolini might have been third. But the most important thing right now for Giovanni Lombardi is for these guys not to make the junction because I think if they do, he'll get a bit of a challenge coming from Figueras when it comes down to the sprint because he's quite a good finisher, Figueras, from a small group like this. Yes, absolutely. He's another very fast man, a lot of resistance, a powerful rider. Not great in the high mountains as of yet, but a big star of Italian cycling, and he does have a very fast finish. And uh, from a breakaway, he's been very hard to beat. Giovanni Lombardi, though, when we remi remind ourselves of the power he can put into the pedals with 200 meters to go, 300 meters to go, uh, when Cipollini then comes around for big stage wins, Lombardi very fast himself. If those four come together, it'll be a furious sprint between Lombardi and Figueres. So I think that's why they're trying to maintain this 10-second gap. And it's been hovering right there for quite a few kilometers now. And one wonders if Mazzolini and Figueres don't have the power to come across. Well, I think at 10 seconds right now, if they look back down the road, they'll see these two men coming across. We're inside 10 kilometers ago. I think, Phil, the most, in, most intelligent thing to do right now would actually be to sit up and wait for these two guys to make the contact because then they would certainly stay clear of the chasing group group behind which seems to be picking up the impetus as we look at the two chasers Figueres and Eddie Mazzolini. I think they'll make contact they're getting very very close now and I see that Pantani sent up two of his riders Gasparoni and Codal Kud to try and close down this gap they're having to work on the front as Figueres the world champion in the under 23s back in 1996 is trying now to get a team win for the team that only has two riders left on it. And he's one of them, and Frankie is the other man behind. We'll take a break. And welcome back as we approach seven kilometers from the finish now. These two riders are just about holding off the chase of Figueras, and here they come. This is the bridge then, and they are about half a minute now ahead of the rest of the breakaway. 
it's going to actually be rather touch and go because we've now got four leaders. They've made the junction and it's only 30 seconds back to the chasing group with a lot of good names in there. Look at this. The move came by Eddie Mazzolini as we're going back to look at the Pantani group and Lombardi now is going to have to dig very deep to pull back Mazzolini. He's got the power to succeed to the finish field, but I think they really need to keep a group of four riders working hard together. Well, Bob, none of these four riders have won a race this year. This is their big chance. This is an incredible move by Bezzolini. He did most of the pacemaking with Figueres to come back to the first two, Velo and Lombardi, and went straight past. Now, that's a great move. He's not noted as a sprinter. Here's a replay of it. Beautiful move there. Lombardi knows that this is a very delicate moment. He's got to get back to turns with him as soon as possible because if he starts to pull the other riders, they're going to start to have an attack fest, and then they're going to have to watch out the uh, infighting in the front of the bike race because the rest of the breakaway, the rest of the front part, can catch back up if they start looking, and that's a great gap. We'll see if Marco Velo has a response or Figueres, but Eddie Mazzolini, very strong in the last part of this bike race, and now he's gone straight past a breakaway, and he's looking for a solo win now. And this man couldn't uh, give anything about what's happening up front, Paul. He's cruising along in the peloton. It's a routine day before the time trial for Simone. Not a problem at all for Gilberto Simone this afternoon. Most of the field could escape as far as he's concerned. He's got a very big buffer in the overall classification. He just wants to finish in the main group today. But I tell you what, this is the counter-attack now coming from Frigueras. He's the man who is most likely to win the stage if it all comes back down together. Lombardi is digging so deep. He would put an awful lot of effort into the success of the two-man breakaway. Now that he's been caught, I think he's going through a bit of a tough period. He just needs to recover slightly, and hopefully that group will come back together. This is the second group on the road. Massimo Codol there, a big, strong bike rider for Marco Pantani. Pantani, hats off to him. He's come to this Giro d'Italia. He's ridden a superb race as the front runners go through five kilometres to go. Well, that was Benucci doing a fast turn as well at the front, but I think they've allowed it to happen, and it's all gone away. These three are back together and now trying to work out what to do with Eddie Mazzolini. Eddie, by the way, hasn't won a race since June in the year 2000, when he won the sixth stage of the Tour of Switzerland. And so it would be very nice for him to win uh, a return to the big time with a stage win in the Giro d'Italia. He's a very, very good cyclist. He's a big workhorse for his team, and he does get places regularly, but he doesn't get the wins. Ninth in Liège, Baston Liège, and tenth in the Flesh Wallon this year were two great results on the Ardennes weekend. So we're looking at Mazzolini now going for gold inside five kilometres to go. The chase behind is around half a minute behind the three in between. There's the three in between. Figueras tried to go just then, found the legs wouldn't quite find the extra revs. He's back in with the other two. And uh, there's no doubt that Mazzolini is working hard. He's opening it ever so slowly. Slowly but surely, he's pulling away from these three riders who now have to be allies for the next four and a half kilometres. They need to work together. They cannot hold anything back at all, can they, Bob? Because if they start to guard a little bit of energy back in their thighs there for the sprint, they're going to lose the stage. Yes, if they hedge at all, closing this gap down to Mazzolini, they'll never see him again. If we see Marco Vella pull through hard, they might have a chance. If we see Lombardi then follow him, they still might have a chance to catch him. But if anybody hesitates at all, Mazzolini's going to be gone to the finish line and that would be a beautiful result for him. He's done all kinds of teamwork for his uh, leader, uh, Stefano Garcelli, and uh, another stage win for Vini Caldirola would go a long time to soothe, uh, to soothe their team sponsors um, if indeed Garcelli loses his second position to the young and up-and-coming Yaroslav Popovich, who is only two seconds behind him on GC in tomorrow's time trial. Well, it's viciously hard now. He finished 15th last year in the Giro d'Italia. He's now claiming 10th place overall, and if he got the 20-second win bonus as well, uh, that would probably uh, confirm that position. Uh, but he still has to get to the finish. Three and a half kilometres to go for him. These are the teammates of Marco Pantani. He's got three of them plus himself in that chase group of about 23 riders. Uh, but they've, uh, it's been a wonderful race this last 50 kilometres. Everybody has had to be totally committed. Nobody's been able to hide from the attacks. And everybody who's put their effort in have been rewarded. And now Mazzolini had to cross to the two leaders. He didn't allow them even for a second win before he shot off the front. It was a very good move. It was taken straight out of the race handbook of tactics and how to attack. Because as soon as they made the junction, he didn't wait. He didn't give anybody a chance to catch their breath. And he went straight over the top. But Giovanni Lombardi has gone right 
right now. He feels a chance of getting himself a stage victory, and he's going to try and cr close the gap. If any man can do this in a single pure effort, it will be Giovanni Lombardi. He has halved the gap there, Phil, in his, about 150 meters. This man is a superb sprinter, and if he can make the junction right now, well, that will be an incredible effort. Unbelievable effort by Lombardi, the last man you'd expect in the break to be able to get across solitary there. There was a slight uphill and then a left-hand turn, and I think he's going to quite just guess get on terms with with uh, Mazzolini at the front. You can see him just right there. So this is going right down to the last few kilometers of this bike race. This is awesome racing, and here he's come back to the wheel. He's going to need to take his breath for a little bit. Look back, and if if Mazzolini doesn't doesn't pull, Figueres and Velo have a chance to catch up, but he's gone right straight past him. So Lombardi knows this is his best chance to, to win a stage in this Giro. But look what he did. He did not want to catch his breath. He wanted to go straight by Eddie Mazzolini. He wanted to encourage him to keep riding. Let's not forget who Giovanni Lombardi is, Bob. He's a man who in 1992 at the Barcelona Olympic Games was the points champion there. He's a fantastic bike rider, but Mazzolini has given all to try and get off the front and win this bike race on his own. It looked, Phil, like a foregone conclusion. That little rise up through the town there gave Lombardi the launch pad he was looking for, but Mazzolini now is going to play the cat and mouse game this is bad for Lombardi oh it is and you can't blame Eddie Mazzolini he can't spin anything like as fast as Giovanni Lombardi can he's no stranger to winning uh, stages of the Giro at two kilometers to go he won last year the sixth stage in Verazzi and he's also won a couple of stages of the Tour of Spain as well in his history books so he's a big winner but he's not a regular winner because normally he spends all of his time helping Mario Cipollini and other teammates to lead them out for their victories those two are clear but it's a a pursuit and it's going to stay that way we are now into a 2,000 meter pursuit Bob and the guys in fourth place could still win this yes absolutely they're coming across we'll have to see if Figueres is doing all the work or Velo's contributing to that to see if either of those two have a chance if they make the junction when we go back I'm sure you're going to see one of the two that are following one of those is going to attack Mazzolini is sitting on he won't do any work that's a good move tactically as long as nobody catches up but if the two riders from behind and they're hesitating now Lombardi doesn't want to tow Mazzolini to the line and I'm sure you're going to see Figueres and Velo come back across to them and watch for the attack from Marco Velo. What a fight back. They're back because Mazzolini thought there's no point in taking Lombardi to the finish. He'll beat me anyway. There's an immediate attack from Marco Velo. I can tell you now that during one of our breaks, Paul Sherwin tipped Marco Velo to win. You might be right. Well, I think he's gone a little bit too quickly there. He's gone a long way from the finish. They're just coming up to 800 metres to go, and Giovanni Lombardi flew back immediately. Lombardi has got a lot of track skill. He'll be waiting now. He'll be listening to the wind behind him to see if there's a rush of noise coming from an acceleration of tires he'll try and force Marco Velo into first place he doesn't want to lead the sprint out he needs somebody to wind the sprint up for him and they're battling now for the wheel of Giovanni Lombardi because they know he's the fastest finisher they want to use his back wheel now as a launch pad to victory well watch for the man in orange Figueras is a perfect finisher him he's the man that Lombardi is worried about he's not going to come round Velo until he knows that Figueras is making his move Mazzolini I think will be the first to go he's got the position lying just off the back as they come over this little rise here I would have thought that Mazzolini, being the non-sprinter, will try the first, but that Lombardi is just like when he won the gold medal in Barcelona on the track, because he's watching his rivals like it's a track finish, and they should be worried, because the rest of the breakaway is closing in very, very quickly. They won't get on terms, though, as they start the sprint. Now, Figueras on the far left. Lombardi this time going for gold for himself, and he's got a nice pair of legs there. Hold his line straight. Giovanna Lombardi, Mazzolini second, Figueras third, and fourth was Marco Velo, and over the line there, possibly Codal, but more likely Benucci uh, for the uh, team of Marco Pantani. It's Bart Pantani himself just taking up the rear there. What a sprint that was. I tell you, Giovanni Lombardi had to dig very deep. Congratulations coming there from Marco Velo. But this man pushed himself, Phil. He'd gone into oxygen debt. That's the amazing thing that a sprinter can do. He can go above and beyond the call of duty that his body can produce he really wanted that win didn't he Bob he really dug deep to get it as well unbelievable effort by Lombardi to get that stage when he went into complete oxygen that totally anaerobic effort there he really put everything into it and once uh, Figueroa saw that he was uh, vanquished by Lombardi he 
didn't even get second place. That was Mazzolini coming through. Here's the Peloton now coming up to the line. They're at 50 seconds. It's going to be over a minute to uh, the finish before they get there. But Simone, that won't worry him and his Sieco, Sieco teammates at all. But a great effort by Giovanni Lombardi. Controlled the breakaway and still had enough power to win the sprint over a very, very determined Giuliano Figueras. Well, that'll be his first victory since he won the 13th stage of the Tour of Spain last year in Santander. Well, a few things have been decided today because it means with no points going to uh, Stefano Gazzelli, Gazzelli or Jan Zarada, I think that stitches the points competition up for Simone. The only chance that Gazzelli has got now is a superb individual time trial. He still is only nine points behind, but it would have to be a pretty impressive rip-roaring time trial by him to take the points competition away from Gilberto Simone, Phil. Here they come. No big effort here. The Seiko boys are going to lead the line over the line over the line. The boys in red at a minute 43 seconds. They're all in. And we'll just take a break. Come back for the presentations and all the results updates. See you in a moment. What we're seeing now with Bertignoli uh, coming from the first check, 17 seconds slower than Backstead, that you might be right. Backstead may have made a bike change in that last quarter of the race. I think that could have been the problem that Magnus had because uh, we did see he finished on a standard road machine and not one of these aerodynamic machines with the clip-on bars that the majority of these bike riders are using. An important uh, couple of battles happening now, Phil, as we get down to the last few riders as uh, Pelazotti getting ready to face 33 kilometres of absolute and utter pain, Bob. Yes, absolutely. A lot of lot of corners. A very technical course out here today. It's uh, only 33 k's, so just about 20 miles. So it's not that long of a race, but very intense effort. There'll be a lot of jumping out of each corner along the course. They're trying to put this fire out. And uh, here's a map of the course. You start up here, Hidroscalo is uh, an old water park from the 20s that they built. A couple of corners right there, and a couple of long straightaways here. Hard left-hander right down here and then a right turn, and then almost 180 here. Come around. If we come, if we're coming up to, uh, to the time check for Marco Pantani as he comes through 11 kilometers, 1345, 46. That's gonna put him a ways down, but not too bad in 10th place currently. A good ride Pantani doing. You can see he's right about here, this corner. Go over the freeway, down. Lots of twists and turns, and uh, 180 degree turn just before they get into the very center of Milan, and they'll finish up by the Piazza Duomo as Dario Frio gets ready for his start. And there's Dario composing himself here because I think he believes in himself again now. He knows he can win this time trial. He came good in the mountains. He's risen from the depths of the classification to be a top finisher. An exceptional ride from him today, Paul, and he could make the top seven or more, or better, perhaps. Well, he could do a very good performance here in the individual time trial. I would say he's one of the pre-race favourites for this uh, stage this afternoon with his teammate Aitor Gonzalez. A good ride, in fact, could jump him above Raimundus Rumsas and Georg Tochnik, and that would pull him right up there into fifth place in the overall classification, which at the end of the day would be a fine, fine performance by this man, Phil, because he really had a hard time on the first few mountains, but certainly he was very dominant towards the end. Well, we're looking now as the riders continue to hit the checkpoints out on the course. This is Zabala. He's coming up for his finish here. A little bit off the pace in the time trial, but he has had a very good tour. A challenger in the King of the Mountains and in the Intergiro competition. He'd be very pleased with his performance, and this for him now, a pretty routine finish. Oh, my goodness me, well, Baxter almost did the same when he approached the finishing line. He didn't take his foot off the pedals, though, but that is a very tight bend. And uh, Zabaya there, just about holding it right as he comes up to the line. There's the time of the rider nearest to the finishing time as we see it on screen. So, as you can see, he's slipping away here through 23rd at the moment, 25th and counting. Cunego there, the youngest man in the race, currently holding... 25th place. So Zabaya is in. 41-41 for him. That won't impress anybody today. But his Giro, I think, finishing on a high note. We're looking down at the finish straight. Now switching back to the start, over to the east of the city. And here is Dario Frigo now. He knows a great ride will get him a high finish in the Giro. And he's already on his best ever finish. We'll take a break. Come back soon. Looking here now at Schmidt arriving at the finishing line in the final time trial of the Giro d'Italia. Still the best time at the finish. 
is Leonardo Bertagnoli with 39 minutes and 22 seconds. But I can tell you that uh, Marzio Brusegin, still to come in, has set the best time at the last checkpoint at 20 kilometres. Gonzalez, seven seconds behind him. Both of those riders still to finish. Now, if you've been watching our coverage, you will see a, a, a nearby building on fire. Well, we now know, in fact, that a plane has crashed into that building with two people on board, and uh, we, obviously it's distracting, I think, some of the coverage. Well, I think that could be why, Phil, for the moment, we don't have any helicopters in the air because we're not getting any mobile shots. All the shots we're getting are from fixed cameras out on the course, and because of that accident, they may well have closed down air traffic control to keep the helicopters down, which means we can't get the mobile cameras out on the course with the motorbike. So that is a story we're keeping up to date with as we speak, but we're looking here at possibly a brand new best time on the finish line. This is Bruce Egan. He set the fastest times out on the course, and I think he's going to go well inside the time there, Phil of Bertignoli. It looks like it, Bob, doesn't it? There's Bertignoli, already a surprise on the leaderboard, having come over the top of Magnus Bagstead in the closing kilometres of the time trial. Bagstead finishing second to Gonzalez in, on stage 15. But Bruce Eugene, who's gone so well as this race has got longer, it's an inspired team, this Fasa Bortolo team this year, and there it is, 38 at 23, an average speed of 51.5 kilometres an hour. Almost a full minute faster than Bertignoli to set the fastest time. He had the best time at the second time check. This is a great ride. I think that Gonzalez and Friegel have sent him out and try to do as hard of an effort as he can so they can gauge their progress along the course. Great ride there by Bruce Seguin. That might stand up for a while now. Well, a very fast ride. We're looking now at the time check of Eddie Mazzolini. Not a great uh, first time check for him going through there. 37 seconds adrift. But it seems a lot of riders, Phil, are accelerating towards the end. The last 10 kilometres is where you really need to have the energy. Well, Mazzolini better hurry it up a little bit because Belly's made a good start to this time trial. was fourth that. He's only about 30 seconds ahead of Vladimir Belly on the GC. It's very prestigious to be in the top 10 of a Grand Tour. So uh, at the moment, um, he's a little bit, uh, Mazzolini is a little bit in danger of losing his top 10 slot. So he's going to have to hustle to the finish line to stay ahead of Vladimir Belly. Scott Sunderland then, just making that corner a bit better than most as he comes round. Yesterday he was in the breakaway and he broke a spoke in his front wheel. He only had 15 spokes left and he could not change his wheel. So he finished with a very ropey front wheel and he thinks it probably cost him a high finish yesterday. He was certainly up with the action right to the very end. But every time he got out of the saddle, I can't tell you what he said, but he was very unhappy with the way the bike was reacting. He certainly was a good performance by him though, just coming across the line there, 41 minutes. I think we'd be very satisfied with his performance here. And uh, this is the interview of Bruce Hagen at the finishing line. And certainly he is the fastest man in right now as we look at Georg Tochnik setting himself up for a 33-kilometer ride. And he'll have to put in a good performance. And if he does, in fact, he could find himself moving up into fourth place. One or two little battles filled this afternoon in this final time trial. The huge battle we've talked about between second and third. But there's also battles between fourth and fifth and fifth and sixth as well. So a lot of decisions here as um, we seem to be having a few problems coming coming down from Italy, all to do with this accident which has happened 500 metres off the racing circuit where we are for the moment. Well, as far as we know, the helicopters are not allowed to fly now and it's due to a light airplane crash into a building not very far away from the course itself and so uh, there's a lot of smoke around as well which would also restrict flights by the helicopter. But we're looking on fixed cameras here of the final time trial in the Giro d'Italia, the former world time trial champion now, uh, Sergei Honshaw. He's setting out, arriving at the 11 kilometre point. And let's see what he can do here. He's running at Bagstead's time. It's still the best time here, but Bagstead seemed to have a problem, and he's not even the best time now because Honshaw may be finding his exit course will suit his sort of riding style. Well, it certainly will. He's a very strong bike rider, and we look now down at Andrea Noefield, probably facing up to a very important stage for him. So, as we wait for the last men to go, including Simone, we'll take another short break. And welcome back, just in time to see the arrival now of Aitor Gonzalez. As he comes in, he's rivaling the time of Bruce Jin. As Gonzalez has gone behind, now that is a surprise. He's gone behind his teammate. He slots into second place. But that's remarkable. This man won the last time, Charlie. Won the Vuelta a España last year, and it is a big surprise to see Brusegin, his teammate, not one second out of him, Bob. 
Pope Frigo, Frigo and Gonzalez asking Brusegging to make a big effort on the day to see what times they can expect to be setting along the course. And they actually haven't been able to pass him yet. <laughs> That's just a very tight two seconds behind there for Gonzalez. That's a surprise. They'll have a lot to talk about at the dinner table tonight. <laughs> Andrea Noe pulling himself down here. He starts the day in fourth place in the overall classification. He needs to put in probably the best individual time trial of his life, Phil, because he could find himself dropping down from fourth to fifth or even sixth if he puts a bad ride in here this afternoon. But what a remarkable performance by Bruce Edgin because he has gone faster than the man we thought was probably the number one favorite for this individual time trial this afternoon. And uh, looks like good news as well, Phil, because the motorbikes are out on the course right now. We must have been able to get the helicopters into action so we'll get some nice pictures as the pink jersey now will be on his way in around about 8 minutes, 12 minutes time I should say. Yeah, three riders still to go, Popovic, Garzelli and then Simone. Each of the riders now, all of the last 10 in the overall, starting at three minute gaps between them. The judge is trying to keep them as far apart as possible to make this really a race of uh, your own ability. We're looking at Andrea Noe, this remarkable man who doesn't win hardly any bike races, yet whenever he comes to the Giro d'Italia, he rides with distinction. He was so, uh, 20th in this race last year, which was for him a bad ride because he was 6th in 2001, 4th in the year 2000, and now fighting for his life to finish 4th again this time around. Well, there is the building, and the reports coming to us are a small aeroplane has crashed into that building, believed to be carrying two people, so we know no more than that at the moment. Sorry about this bit of picture breaker, but once we get into the trees now, our helicopters have been delayed in getting off the ground because of that uh, air crash. And so they're now up, and we're now with our bikes, and we're up behind Andrea Noe just now. Well, it's not surprising, Bob, because that uh, air crash could have come not too very far away from Linata Airport, which uh, over the last few years they've actually been trying to close down because it has been regarded as being so close to the city centre. So hopefully um, we'll get more update on what's happening there at the moment. But for some of these bike riders, they have to put all of this out of their minds right now and concentrate on the job in hand. This is Marco Pantani coming up to the second time check at 20 kilometers meters covered and still I would say Phil for Marco Pantani this is a pretty respectable time but he does have to put in a fine ride today because otherwise he's going to drop down a couple of places in the overall classification. Well he's living well there 13th place for him at the moment at that check. A brief glimpse there of young Yaroslav Popovich knowing now that if he can just do a ride approximately as good as he did on stage 15 which was the other time trial then he will get second place in the Giro d'Italia. Ahead of him, Andrea Noe, knowing that his fourth place is not safe yet, riders can challenge even as far back as Frigo. Now, this man, 23 years of age, they say he is such a humble man, everybody likes him. He just gets out there, he rides his bike. He's as well known here in Italy, Bob, as he is in the Ukraine. Yes, absolutely. The Italians really adopting him because his patron, Ernesto Camago, maker of the bicycles that Land Balcredit rides, he really believes in this man. He wants to see him continue to progress, and this year has been a fantastic revelation for the young man from the Ukraine. Well, we've been reading on uh, the internet about the transfer fee for a footballer from England by the name of David Beckham, $47 million transfer fee. This young man, I think, Phil, we'll talk about a lot in the winter during the transfer season as well, because if he finishes second in the Giro d'Italia, there will be a lot of big teams looking after this man because he's certainly going to be a star of the future. And uh, Stefano Garzelli there briefly trying to concentrate. He wants to hold on to second place in the overall classification. He's two seconds ahead of Popovich. It's going to be a pretty tall order for him. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, we have a little bit of a picture problem here, but this is uh, Pelizzotti coming up to his first check at 11 kilometres. He's got to stay up amongst the front runners. It looks as though he is here. I see another good ride there by Duma and, Ve and Belli as he comes through 13.38 for Pelizzotti. So he'll stay up amongst the leaders for the moment at least. And Vladimiro Belli, he's up to the 20 kilometre point now and he's going to be just on the edge of a top 10 performance here, for the moment at least. We still have Godzelli to start and Simone to start, and then all of the riders will be either finished or on their way. And there is Dario Frigo, while here on the start house is Godzelli. Big day for him. We'll take Stefano Godzelli. He once won the Giro d'Italia in the year 2000. He's on his countdown now, fighting to finish second in this race. He's been considered number two to the race leader ever since this race began. 
And here we are. The last 33 kilometres is under pressure from a young 23-year-old. Well, I tell you what, he'll have to do a really superb performance. He lost 43 seconds in that last individual time trial, Phil. And if he does the same again, well, he'll drop down into third place. As we look now, the time to beat of uh, Bruce Edgin at 38.23 really is quite remarkable because he went out as a, a rabbit to try and set out some times for men like uh, for Dario Frigo and, of course, Aitor Gonzalez. And for the moment, he's beaten both of them. Adolfo Garcia coming in. And a very good ride by him, really, because he's not expected to do a great time trial. They've been very active throughout the Kelme team, even without the big names of last year. And he crosses the line there, 37th time, 41 minutes 48. Still the leader, surprisingly at the finish, 38-23, Brishagin. Uh, second ahead of the big favourite, Aitor Gonzalez today, both on the same team. Uh, Popovich, though, not worried about winning the tour, uh, winning the time trial, rather. He's more interested in gaining two seconds over the man now on the road behind him. And Popovich finished sixth in the time trial, losing a minute and 36 seconds to Gonzalez on what was stage 15 of this race. Very nice position on the machine, too. You can see he's opted for a full disc wheel at the back to reduce any kind of friction at the rear end of the machine. A nice machine, Bob, we're looking at here, but I think he's got a fabulous position. He's right over those aerodynamic handlebars at the front. His back is nice and arched, making him a very aerodynamic position. Yes, absolutely. Perfect time trialing position by Popovich there. You can see the front wheel had a deep section rim, lots of spokes, so he can corner all of these very technical corners on the course. He can go around them with a little bit more um, uh, uh, technical prowess then if he had a double discs on the bicycle just a disc bike disc wheel in the rear so there's still a little bit of good handling characteristics for the bicycle he also his bars uh, will replicate almost when he's not in the drop bars of the aero position when he's by the brake levers that'll be about the same as his regular road bike so he can handle all the corners as well then of course when he gets back into the aerodynamic bars he's really going fast down the road look great on there let's see if we can get Garcelli's which we'll, I'm sure we'll We'll get to him out on the course also and compare the two styles. Well, here we are. The last man of the 97 survivors in the Giro d'Italia, Gilberto Simone. Take a look at this. Uh, Pre-World War II, the biggest winning margin was 1 hour, 55 minutes and 26 seconds by Calzolari. Since the World Wars ended, the biggest winning margin by Carlo Clerici, 24 minutes and 16. The only other man to have a margin bigger than the current margin held by Simone is Vittorio Adoni, and that was back in 1965. So he's set here to get the third biggest margin since the ending of the World Wars. And Simone, as you saw there, well into the pink. Just about everything he's got on is pink today, including a brand new saddle, uh, which he's put on, the Arione, which is also pink, specially manufactured. Might be the only time we'll see it. There it is, because he'll be sat on it very shortly. Fabulous machine. I don't think he knew, in fact, that he was going to have this all-pink all machine for the individual time trial. And Bob, it's got to be the first time I've ever seen a pink disc wheel. I have never seen a pink disc wheel in all of my days. And <laughs> hats off to Gilberto Simoni. Not only is he riding great, but he also has a lot of style. Honchar at 20 kilometers, best time, 22.51. It really does look as though the world champion prefers this course to the one uh, just on a week ago, Paul. I think he does. He's able to use that huge gear of his. The disadvantage he has is going around the corners because he's not a great agile bike, bike rider when it comes to the technical courses right now, but certainly he has gone out the fastest for the moment. Scarponi coming in, a respectable time by Scarponi, one of the teammates of Mario Cipollini. He'll finish inside of the top uh, 15 or 16 places but I think it'll be interesting to see the time set out on the course by Dario Frigo because I have a feeling Frigo has progressed as this bike raiders race has got into the third week and we should see him put in some fast times back on the road now the, with Popovich now we're waiting for Popovich of course to reach the 11 kilometers check that's the first timing point on the course the next one comes at 20 kilometers and the next time you see a time he'll be on the finishing line as I say, he's looking just for a two-second margin. He's got no ambition to catch the race leader, of course. He's far out of sight. Uh, but you've got to also ride well, otherwise they're queuing up behind to snatch the places on the podium too. Well, we're seeing some uh, interesting riding here. Just winging in and out. I think that was Massimo Codal. Yes, it was. He's coming up to the finishing line now. This is a rider who's hardly won a race in his life and has had a tremendous tour, and it came all of a sudden in the last week. Well, he's a tough bike rider. He's always been uh, regarded as an excellent domestique, but this year I think he stayed upside along Mar Marco Pantani on very many occasions in the big mountain passes, which has put him Phil, well up in the top of the overall classification. So Codal holding a good finish here. 
Carlos de Cruz of uh, Francais de Jeu has had a good, another good time. Charlie Red won the other day as well. Uh, but Codal challenging his time and bettering it. 40-12, giving him seventh place at the moment. A very good ride because he lies 15th overall. And he'll certainly hold on to that. Might even improve. Rumzas here as well at 11 kilometers to go. He's up amongst the front runners. This man chasing them all will take a break. And welcome back as the arrival here of Marco Pantani and another good time trial from this man who's confirmed his return to the Tour of Italy with a very good solid performance this year. What a shame he crashed and lost those 15 minutes and 59 seconds on the dreaded stage 18 of this event. But Pantani never lost any of his encouragement and he's come home 16th time. Good ride, Bob. That's a great ride, Pantani. He is chasing Sandy Kassar, who was only 21 seconds behind him at the start of the day on GC and I think Kassar who's in third place right now might have gone over uh, past him on GC so Pontani might be dropping a place there and here comes Popovich through 11 Ks going absolutely flying down the road he's going to be right in there with uh, the time of Aitor Gonzalez so that would be good for sixth or seventh perhaps at the 11 kilometer check and we'll seventh place indeed we'll have to check on Garcelli's progress in about three three and a half minutes time to see where he is out on the course so far very exciting battle for second place Yes, and this is Garcelli here now, and this is the most interesting aspect now. He's got to get up to that check. In no more than two seconds slower than Popovich. 13.24 is the time for Popovich at that check. Well, you know, Phil, just uh, looking back through the results at uh, Bruce Egan, he's been a professional for an awful long time, and I just had to have a quick check because he's been one of those guys who you've known his name for an awful long time, but he actually doesn't have a victory to his credit. He turned professional back in 1997, and throughout that time he's raced for some of the top teams. He rode in Spain for an awful long time with uh, Bonesto. And right now, if he holds on to the win, that will be an unbelievable surprise for the books. It certainly will, Paul. Now, Cruz is in in ninth, and Baranowski is challenging that time as he comes up towards the line. Again, Darius Baranowski had a wonderful tour, 12th overall at the start today. And uh, although the CCC Polsat team from Poland lost one of their riders, Nazdux, when he was disqualified for his dangerous riding, this man has ridden extremely well as uh, a man that we know very well from his racing on the British-speaking teams as well. He comes up to the line, and he's in in 40-41. Well, Bob, we're looking down the home straight there. The wind today uh, can be a factor, can't it, in where the riders place themselves? Yes, absolutely. In time trials nowadays, uh, the, every second counts. So you can see Raimundus Rimsaus here up against the barriers instead of in the middle of the road. A little bit of crosswind coming. A lot of turbulence inside the city streets during a time trial. So he's trying to get as much protection from the wind by riding right up here up against the barriers. Bob and his new toy there, the Telestrator, he loves it and it's, it certainly makes it easier to understand, I'm sure of that. This is Vladimir Belly now, the Lamprey rider on the same team as Rumzas, the rider we've just seen, but Belly now making his finish. Another man who's had a great tour. He's not going to move very much in the overall classification, but he needs a good time here and it looks like he's delivered a very good time. Just on the 42nd mark, as he comes up towards the line, Kim Kirshen down there in seventh place. Watch him for the future, that rider from Luxembourg. Belly's in, though, taking the place off Kim. He's now seven, 39 12. Very good ride, that Paul. A very important ride for Vladimir Belly because it could give him a top 10 position. He needs to take out 32 seconds from Eddie Mazzolini, who started behind him on the road. But here we're looking at the man who starts last. He's sweeping up the field right now, coming through 25 kilometres to go. He will try and put in a fine performance this afternoon. He's not likely to win the individual time trial, but for him, it's very important to go out with a bang. He's the boss man, isn't he, Phil? Uh, Bob in the Giro. As we look at Garzelli's time, and this is actually pretty impressive because I think he's going to go just inside the time of Popovich. He's going to match Popovich almost to the second. They're going to be very closely uh, aligned here right now. Popovich trying to stay in front. He's just a couple exactly of seconds. Exactly the same time. Exactly the same time <laughs> as Yaroslav Popovich. Quite remarkable at that point, Phil. He's <laughs> obviously marking his time trial on the man who started three minutes in front of him. Well, that is absolutely unbelievable, quite frankly, because at this point last uh, time trial, he was already losing ground. But they've gone through equal seventh now, 13 minutes and 24 seconds. So we can forget the first 11 kilometres. The race starts again now. 
You know, he's a tough bike rider, Stefano Garzilli, and both Bob and I, I think, felt that even in the last week of the Giro d'Italia, he was going to crack because he had no competition for 12 months. He certainly put the mileage in. That's absolutely no question at all about it. But, Bob, to do that, to equal him, he's obviously super motivated today. He, he is really putting in a very courageous ride right here. He's trying to chase him all the way to the finish. It's going to be a tight battle. It's only two seconds. Whoever beats the other in this individual time trial will take the second highest step on the podium, but it's Simone that's become a real patron of this event. We haven't seen a ride like that in a long time. In the Giro d'Italia, of course, Lance Armstrong is the big boss of the Tour de France in the last four years, but uh, Simone seems to be the big boss now of the Giro d'Italia. Tochnik, who's having his finest ever Giro d'Italia, and he had a good ride in it last year. Very briefly it was as he passed through the checkpoint, but back out with Garzelli. Just looking at Godzelli here, Bob, he looks like a, a different rider than the time trial on stage 15. He's, you can tell when a rider's getting what he wants, all the power out of his body. He looks like a man today doing very well. Yes, he was locked in a battle at that point with Gilberto Simoni for the overall win in the Giro d'Italia. That provides us so much more pressure, so much more attention from the media. A little bit distracted. Here comes Mazzolini. He is desperately trying to maintain his top 10 position on GC against Vladimir Obelli, who's put in a very, very fast time. He needs to conserve 21 seconds, uh, excuse me, 32 seconds from, from uh, Belly, and it's going to be very close on the line. Well, he might even get inside of Belly's time there. Belly's time will come up next because Belly was the seventh fastest finisher. There it is right now, and he's got 32 seconds to get to the line. I have a feeling that uh, he's going to keep his place in the top oh, ten. Look at the way he's fighting. He knows how important it is. He's gone past Belly's time. The clock starts now as to whether he holds on to tenth place, but I think he's going to do it, and it's going to be close. But he is going to do it. So Mazzolini looks here as though he's confirming his 10th place finish in the Giro. Very good ride. 39.54. What a desperate finish. These guys have to be mathematicians to know when they're going to have a high finish in the Giro. 12 seconds slower than <laughs> Belly. Just barely holding on to the top 10. Fantastic racing here on the Giro d'Italia. <laughs> it certainly was, Bob. This is the race leader closing down this year's Giro d'Italia. Knowing you just keep a nice little tempo, he can lose eight minutes and still win the tour, so he's not going to lose anything like that. He's looking for a good ride though, because he doesn't want to let his fans down. Sergei Honshaw, we think, will be the new best time now as he turns into the finishing line. So, Honshaw, the former world champion here, did a poor ride on stage 15 time trial, but now this course much more suited to his big style of riding. Heavy gears, and he got round that corner as smoothly as just about anybody today. Bruce Eugene has never won a race in his life, and I don't think he's going to improve on that score now, because all of a sudden the former world champion of the time trial is firing on all cylinders. As he comes up towards the line, remember the Honshaw, ninth overall in this year's Giro. He's going to hold that and might even go one better. He finishes best time, 38 minutes and 4 seconds. New leader, Sergei Honshaw, on top of the leaderboard. 19 seconds better than Bruce Jim. So, while the pink jersey... Welcome back. I'm sorry about the picture break-up here, but this is uh, Yaroslav Popovich from the Ukraine, and he's riding exactly the same time ahead of him as he was in the start house. They're locked together, him and Garzelli, three minutes apart on the road, and both crossing through the first check at 11 kilometres in exactly the same time. Now we're at 20. He's gone through in 23.31. Still holding the same position there of seventh. Now we'll have to see what Garzelli can do to match that. Well, he should be here in around about three minutes time. Uh, the two positions of the bike riders are actually superb on the machine. They're both riding a very motivated individual time trial here this afternoon, Bob, because for Stefano Garzelli, what, is, what he's proved to us, I think, over this last week is what a fighter he is. On a couple of occasions, he's gone close to losing that position, but he's fought back and pulled himself back into the race. He's done a great job. He didn't have any, let's not forget, any racing for a year since last year's Giro d'Italia, as we see the finish of Pelizzotti. Now he's trying to hold on to eighth place. Gonchar setting an incredibly fast time, and he needs two minutes and seven seconds. Gonchar's done 38.04, so it looks like he's going to lose his <laughs> position on GC to a, a full-lying Gonchar. Pelizzotti now going to be in ninth place. It seems to be at the moment anyways on GC, and Gonchar moving up, incredibly moving up a place on GC, even though he was two minutes and seven seconds behind him to begin the stage. I think he might just hold on to it by a couple of seconds there, in fact, Bob, because that was a, a very fine performance by Pelizzotti, really. At the end of the day, he came across pretty rapidly there. 
Well, this is an interview here with Marco Pantani. Unfortunately, we can't hear it. He's on the Italian network as we swing out on the course now. Gilberto Simoni. No pressure on him today, but he's uh, dropping a little bit off the pace, but he's not worried because the battle is ahead of him for who will finish second to him. Dario Frigo, only second best time when he went to the 20 kilometer point. Now, has he improved to make it first best time at the finish? Riders have been going quicker over the last 13 kilometers of the course, but already, Paul, he's dropped behind. Well, Dario Frigo, I thought, would put a fine performance in this afternoon because he came out of the Giro d'Italia with excellent form. He's ridden a strong course. Maybe the fact that there have been a lot of corners and it's been fairly technical have gone against him, Bob. Yeah, it looks like he's coming up to about fourth place here on the stage. Frigo, a good effort in the time trial. Couldn't beat his two teammates, however. He's going to wind up in fourth place. That's a good ride for him. I think he hoped for better, though. I'm sure he did because he's gone behind both of his teammates, and Gonzalez and... Uh, the other rider there, Bruce Egin. There's the situation now. Honshaw, the former world champion, still leading by 19 seconds. Gonzalez is third. Frigo is now fourth. Three Fasa Bortolo riders there doing their team position a lot of good because the aggregate time of the best three riders each day is added together for the team. Now, out of 20 kilometres, 23.32. The clock has stopped. So he is now one second slower, which puts him one second in front. What a fight. Unbelievable. It's going to go down to the second in the last 13 kilometers of this race, over 2,000 miles. Garcelli will not give up. Popovich, a fantastic athlete. That's a real war for second place. And you know that neither one is giving an inch. It's go all the way down to the line. That's a great battle. This man now just getting right over the handlebars. It looks as if he may well be pushing himself just a little bit too hard here, Bob. The top end of his body now starting to rock a bit. That's a sign that indicates he's losing some of the power from his back. He's trying to find the power from somewhere else. Sorry about this little bit of picture breakup. This is because of the microwave link going up to the helicopter and down to the finishing line, which is completely devoid of riders for the moment and we get back further down the course to the man who today really Bob this is a parade of honor for Gilberto Simone he's been number one man throughout the Giro d'Italia supreme in the mountains this is not his terrain right now but for him it's just a question of getting the last 33 kilometers out of the way Simone in the off season did a lot of very hard training he watched every single calorie that he consumed since last year's Giro d'Italia he's down to 54 kilograms 125 pounds obviously on the fat a flat rides against a guy like Gonchar, he's not going to be able to produce as much. He's got 15 k's to go before an absolutely glorious uh, parade into Milano, into the Piazza Duomo, the very center of uh, the uh, northern uh, city of Milan. And uh, Simone's flying. This is a great day for him, but he's put a lot into his comeback here in the Giro d'Italia. And uh, he's probably the lightest he's ever been. He's been flying up every mountain pass that we've got to, and now he's He's on the cusp of winning a great judo. It'll be his second win in this Tour of Italy. Well, he's riding an American bicycle, that's for sure, as he races it towards the finish in Milan. And with no pressure at all on him, he's going to remember this ride for the rest of his life. The day he coursed through the streets of Milan as the, the winner. It's the first, not the first time he's done it either. He's also uh, done it a couple of years ago. But in fairness, it'll be the first time he's won with a closing time trial. He looks very cool, very smooth, no pressure. He would have had a good night's sleep and woken up saying, well, I've just got to go out there and ride. No fears at all like those of Popovich or Garzelli, who are now split by a single second after all of these kilometers, as we're now seeing Rumsas coming in. This big man who continues to surprise us, third in the Tour de France last year. He's going to come in with a time around about six or seven best, unless he's gone really mad. It's an important ride for him as well, because if he can outride Tochnik today, he can move himself up one place in the overall classification. We haven't seen many of his time checks out on the course, because he's, I think, ridden a fairly sensible first 20 kilometres. But right now, he knows that he has to give everything towards the line. Right now, we're into the last 500 metres or so. And for him, he really is trying to climb one step higher in the overall classification. On big drives along. He might get fifth place here because he just needs a bit of a sprint and he's, he may have got it, yes. 39.07 for Rumsas, a very good ride indeed. Still the top names and surprises to come. We'll take another break. And welcome back. We're looking at the last man out on the course in the time trial final stage today of the Giro d'Italia. I'll quickly give you a rundown on the overall. Sergei Gonchar, the 
Former world champion has set the best time thus far, 38 minutes and 4 seconds for the just over 20 mile course. Marzio Brusegin is in second, Aitor Gonzalez lies third and Dario Frigo has finished now in the fourth best time. Rumzas is home with the fifth best time and Tochnig, when we see him arrive, has got to beat 39 minutes and 34 seconds to hold his place in the overall classification. We're well, looking here at Yaroslav Popovic, Paul. Despite all of the effort, he's prized one second out of Gartzelli, and he needs two. Well, he needs two. At the last time check, they were separated by a single second. It's a great battle between these two riders. You can almost feel the urgency coming into his pedalling action right now to try and lift it just that little bit more. In the last time trial, he actually beat Gardzelli by 43 seconds. Right now, he is only bettering him by a single second. And at the end of it, last man on the road in the pink jersey, Gilberto Simone, he is not not worried at all, Phil. He's a, a fair way down. He's about 30 seconds down on Gardzelli and Popovich at the last time check. But for him, it's just a question of really getting himself to the finish line, just to make sure that he doesn't fall off in one of these rather tricky corners. And there are one or two out on the course which are a bit dodgy. This is Georg Tochnik, and he certainly must know that he has to get inside of 39 minutes and 34 seconds if he's going to keep that. And it will be a big battle. It'll be fairly close, in fact. It's going to be really tight because he was down by a few seconds at the checkpoints. He's got to have at least not lost more than about eight seconds in this final stretch of the course. Every inch of this concrete he needs to cut off as short as possible and run because if his time is slower than 39.33, he will lose his place. And this will mean a lot to the Gerolsteiner rider, the Austrian on the German team. This has been a fine ride by him and he's going to have to sprint and it's going to be desperately close. He won't beat the time of Romzas, that's for sure now, but he's got to beat 39. 33 and he's done it well good for him 39 25 he holds his place there's some unbelievable battles going out on the roads today of the Giro d'Italia it's the last rendezvous of everybody in this bike race and Bob it seems as if these men at the top end of the overall classification really have pulled themselves inside out in this final time trial look at the face on that man <laughs> look at the face on Toshnik did not want to lose his position there went flat out and he looks like he's going to defend himself against room sauce who is a great time trial Rimsaw's had tremendous troubles in the first time trial with his machine, changed his bike a couple of times in that. He had no trouble today, set a very good time, but still it was he was unable to overcome Georg Tochnik, who put in a flat out effort to stay in fifth place on overall. And here's a so far the uh, the stage um, standings as they are at the moment. Gonchar over Bruce Seguin. Gonzalez in third place, Frigo, three teammates there, second, third, and fourth from the Fossa Bortolo team. Then Rumsauce is in fifth place and Casar down in sixth. So a great ride, but not quite enough from the Fossa Bortolo team to uh, be on the top of the stage. It doesn't seem like uh, no way Popovich, Garcelli, or Simone will be able to beat the time of uh, Gonchar that he set so far on the course. You never know though. We haven't seen much from, from uh, Noe so far in the in the time trial, but he's trying to hold on to his fourth place position. And Tochnik did quite a good ride there. We'll see how he comes in. And here's back out on the course, Garcelli. Looks like he slowed up a little bit. He's put everything into this. He'd love to stay in second place. Popovich flying towards the finish line and Garcelli has to do, go all the way to the line as hard as he can to keep it. Well, Tochny, by the way, finished 10th in the time trial, beating Rumzas on stage 15. The situation reversed today, uh, but Tochny has done enough to get his finest ever finish. He should hang on now to that fifth place overall at the race end. We're looking at Gartzelli. Still doesn't know whether he's going to climb on the podium in second or third place because this man, and I suppose second is the word we have to use now, well, the last check was one second he was searching for uh, to take second place huge battle. These two riders will be getting information passed to them by their team managers who've probably got microphones mounted onto the hood of the car right now shouting information, shouting the, the, the fact that they want them to lift up the cadence just to keep the pressure on. When you get into a situation like this, Bob, in a time trial, sometimes a little shout in the last three or four kilometres can make you just dig into yourself just that little bit more and try and get out there and realize that you maybe have to sprint over the last 500 meters. Yes, he'll get the, he'll get the uh, reports from his team manager, at least as far as uh, the time checks are concerned, having a little bit of trouble with the motorbike that's following Popovich at the moment. On the left-hand side of your screen is Popovich, on the right-hand side is Garcelli, and they're in a furious battle for second place. Two seconds separating them at the beginning of the day. After 20 kilometers, only one second separating them, so Garcelli fighting all the way down to the line. Both of the riders in an absolute trance of pain, trying to get to the line 
line as quickly as possible. Here comes Andrea Nela. He's doing a decent time for him. That's a pretty good result. He's falling away a little bit from the leaders board and uh, here he comes to the line, Phil. Well, as Noe comes up to the line, this is the rider, as I say, he's had a love affair with the Giro since he finished fourth in 2000, sixth in 2001, 20th last year, and now fighting to hold fourth this time around. It's going to be tight for him because they are trying to take it away from him, but this man's been a battler ever since he held on to third place at the top of the Terminilo. He's in a very good ride by Andrea Noe, 39.53, eighth at the moment. I think he will hold on to that fourth place, and he deserves it. So, we're getting down to the top three to finish now. That battle is still there. We'll take a Welcome back. Stefano Gartelli fighting for his life here to hold on to second place in the Giro. The rider up ahead of him there, Popovic. One second slower. One second is the difference now between the two on the overall classification on the day. A Popovic riding the course just a single second quicker. This man, he'll be lucky if he makes the top 25 on this stage because he hasn't been in any hurry at all. He's built his lead to the mountains. Well, he hasn't had to worry too much. He came into this final time trial with a buffer of eight minutes and four seconds over Stefano Garzelli. He knows he's not going to lose that amount of time. And I think, Bob, probably he didn't want to take too many risks out on the course because, after all, there are 33 corners out on this course as we come to the finish line right now. This is the man that we will be talking about for many years to come Yaroslav Popovic a good ride by him today could put him up into second place in the overall classification he started the day in third these next two times are going to be very interesting to watch well it's frightening Popovic is going to come in and have to wait the best part of three minutes to know where he finishes third or second but at 23 I suppose it doesn't matter he's still a top three finisher he's sprinting for his life and second place now and then he'll have to wait Bertagnoli is the man that's shocked today, but he slipped away to seventh now as Popovic comes in. He should be just around that time. He might be slightly outside. He will be slightly outside. Eighth place at the moment for Popovic, 39-23. Well, it's going to be a three-minute wait right now for the next man to come in. And if it's a three-minute and three-second wait, well, then this man we're looking at here in the white jersey of Landbau Credit will move up into second place in the overall classification. Bobby really gave it everything there, but now this man will know the time that he has to beat. He will see the time on the finishing board and know that he can push it just that little bit more in the last three or 400 metres. It's going to be so desperately close. Garcelli knows that Popovic is in now. He's just trying to get himself to the finish. Popovic, fantastic technique in the last few corners out on the course. A lot of cobbles, very tricky in the last couple of S turns just before the finish line. That could be the difference after so many miles of racing between these two men. But Garcelli, he knows that he, he is in a decent time. He's close to the finish line. He needs to, get, to go better than 39.25 to stay in second place on GC. Stefano Garzelli, he's been a real fighter throughout this tour since the day he went up the very first steep mountain, the Terminilo, shoulder to shoulder with Gilberto Simone and beat him at the end of that day. He's never given up. He'll rue the day he crashed when he knocked Pantani off though on stage 18 because that caused the situation which he is now trying to redress here. It's going to be tough sprint, Paul very tough sprint for him he's inside the barriers now indicating to him how many hundred meters to go and he'll be looking at those counting them by and as a seasoned professional Bob he will have calculated just how long it's going to take him and there is the kilometer flag normally at this kind of speed that would take him a minute and ten seconds if it was in a straight line there are a couple of corners in there this is going to be very close indeed and he may well feel just get the advantage and I think I if he close. holds on to it it'll be he by a, a fraction of a close second here to a may have it wiped away that one on a two second deficit. We're looking at a time of 39 uh, 23 of Popovic, so uh, Gartelli can make it 39 25 and hold on. Uh, and what would happen, they would go to the tenths of a second in the time trials uh, to decide the winner of or who gets second place in effect if times appeared equal at the whole second. Watching then the arrival now of Gartzelli. I'd love to see a shot of Popovic uh, watching this on television, knowing now that this man is very, very close to hanging on to second place. The time of Popovic is all we need worry about, 39.23, currently 38.53. It's going to be desperately close. It is all going to watch this corner. It's a tight one. He's made it smoothly and sensibly. And the crowd leaning over the barriers now, shouting home Gartzelli like he's the winner of the tour here, which he certainly is not, but he could be the winner 
Serena a second place, 23 is the time of Popovich, I think he's going to hang on here as Garcelli will see the clock, he knows it's going to be a huge effort, 50 metres to go, well hats off to Stefano Garcelli, he keeps his second place. And he extended his advantage by a couple of seconds too, he's going to be second there, five seconds ahead of Yaroslav Popovich, what an unbelievable ride, he turned it around over the last 12 kilometres Phil, he really dug deep, look at the face on him there, he knows he's done something special, he will have looked at the time on the board, it will be communicated to him right now, what a great ride. Well that is a fantastic ride, it seemed like there's a battle for every single position on GC and Garcelli and Popovich treating us to a, a wonderful little race there, Garcelli going so hard all the way to the line, just barely conserving the veteran, former winner of the Giro Italia, tremendous amount of pride, didn't want to get passed by the young upstart Popovich on GC, put everything into it, and now all we have to do is wait for Simone and confirmation of the winner of the Giro Italia. But it looks like this man is going to stay in second place, and I'm sure he's very pleased with that. Yeah, it would be interesting to see what his final position is on the stage, though, Bob, because if he gets himself uh, in a sixth-place finish, well, then he's got a very good chance of getting the points, but I think he was outside of that. There, the two riders were together. Absolutely remarkable. Fantastic ride by Stefano Garzelli there. Really was quite incredible. Well, it's going to go down to the line now because uh, the finish there of Garzelli could well just shade the points jersey for him because uh, judging by the check times of Gilberto Simone he's not going to get any points today and it'll all depend on the final finishing position here of Garzelli as to whether he has actually won the points competition on the last day if he hasn't he's lost it by a couple of seconds a couple of points it's going to be desperately close that's been a most interesting race in many ways this year the crowd now are going to have a little bit of a wait here before they can shout home the man in pink because the man in pink is the last rider on the course. Now, this is the situation on the time trial at the moment. Only one man to come. It won't alter this. Uh, Sergei Gonchar will win the time trial. The world champion formerly is back. Bruce Jean got one of the finest performances he's ever done in his life, finishes second. Aitor Gonzalez, who won the last time trial, he will finish in third. Frigo fourth, and Rumzas will take fifth at a minute and three seconds. The boy in pink at the time checks was outside the top 25, so there will be a bit of a gap because he started three minutes behind Garzelli. He also will have conceded at least a minute and probably more uh, to him out on the course. Uh, but the crowd here have enjoyed this year's Giro d'Italia in many, many ways. The return of the bad boys is what we said in our very first programme over three weeks ago. Well, the bad boys have become good boys this time around, and they've enlivened this race from the start to the finish, haven't they, Paul? Well, they certainly have. The, everybody now waiting for the last man out on the course, and what a dramatic time trial it has been for all of the riders in the top places in the overall classification. We're actually, by the way, finishing in the Plaza Duomo, a cathedral in the centre of Milan which took around about 700 years to complete and everybody right now waiting for this man on what is, seems to be a very long time trial for him he's well outside of the top 10 bolt Phil and in fact you can see here he's slipping away and it's going to be quite remarkable the reception he's going to get when he comes into the last 500 meters well holding on to seventh place uh, Stefano Garzelli and that might be one place too far for him but it's touch and go Simone coming in He's going to be a top 15 finisher to score any points in that pink jersey for the other jerseys, leading in both classifications. Uh, but for this is all about winning the race on time. Now, the best time for the distance, and he'll be declared the final winner. He's got round this course eight minutes and four seconds at the start of the day, ahead of the nearest man. That will alter, but only slightly today. He's still got a great buffer there as he comes up to the line. No hurry at all. He may even give us a two-arm salute. Wouldn't surprise me. He waves to the crowd, and that's the way to finish a time trial, Paul, when the time doesn't matter. Not important at all for that man. He lost a few more seconds to his overall classification there, but not really important. This man just wanted to ride the final time trial. And in fact, Phil, that quick calculation, Stefano Garzelli's seventh place will bring him equal on points with Gilberto Simone. But the competition, I think, will go to Simone because he's had three stage wins to Garzelli's two. Gosh, well, that'll go on to come back. We'll have to wait and see what the judges think about that. We haven't got the rules uh, immediately to handle, or we do have them here. Um, 40 18, so no points for Simone. As I say, it was all about winning this race. His winning margin in the end will be just over seven minutes. So he conceded a little bit today, and so he won't be the third fastest 
winner since the post-war years. He'll slip away a little bit on that, but it doesn't matter. It's still a huge winning margin, and he's certainly not worried. This is the moment he's waited for. Ever Nicky owns now Bobby's pink. I hope the colours don't run in the wash. Well, he's the Simone hooligans have rushed out onto the course. I think that's a lot of his friends and relatives from his region of Trento. They're throwing him up in the air. Luckily, he's been on a diet all year, and it's no trouble at all for him to be pitched right up in the air there. It's a replay of the moment when he won the Giritaia. Absolute ecstasy for Gilberto Simone. He it's really enjoyed those country. last meters, Phil. He really enjoyed the last kilometer, taking a serious enjoyment and uh, just kissing his wedding ring there, I think dedicating this win to his wife. Well, as Simone comes home, the winner for the second time in his career, and all of his fans and family are here. Ariana is his wife's name, and he's got two daughters as well. I'm sure they're all in the crowd waiting to meet him as he comes over the finishing line. He is the winner of the 86th edition of the Giro d'Italia by seven minutes and six seconds in the end. Popovich, look at that, five seconds and in third place. Uh, we're happy with that result. I'm sure he is too, because at 23, that man is a future winner of the Giro if ever we've seen a great bike rider. But uh, let's live now with these very happy pictures for the man that was thrown out of the Giro last year for allegedly taking cocaine. It took a long time, but in the end, by the end of the summer, he was exonerated. And then he chose to train hard, come back, and prove to everybody that he was still a real winner of the tour and he didn't have to do it by taking drugs. He's done that. He's won the three of the most difficult stages of the race. He just crushed his rivals. And now he is the winner of the 86th Giro d'Italia. Now, don't go too far away because we'll stay around here in Milan. And when we come back after our break, We'll be bringing you up to date with all of the results and seeing those happy, smiling faces that have struggled every day so far to get the corks out of the champagne. Maybe today they'll have the strength to do that. Just take a short break then and rejoin us very soon. And welcome back. Well, the fans have now discovered uh, Gilberto Simone. He runs out the winner of the Giro d'Italia for a second time. This, without doubt, his finest ever victory. His sixth win of the year as well, as he now salutes the crowd. Well, what a wonderful feeling for him, dressed in pink, as he has been for 12 days. But the man who won the time trial stage, and this, by the way, is the fourth time he's done this over the years, Sergei Gonshaw, producing a real ride today to run out the winner of this race against the truth. And as he puts the big trophy down, a stage winner, let's have a look how the stage panned out. Bruce Sejin getting his finest ever finish there in second place, just 19 seconds off his first ever win as a pro. Aito Gonzalez, who won stage 15 time trial, third this time, by Mondes Rumzas there in fifth place. Further down the list, and this is the big one, Stefano Gartelli finishing seventh, Yaroslav Popovic finishing ninth, the time gap difference, just three seconds. And for that reason, Gartelli holds his second place, increases it to a very comfortable five seconds over Popovic, while Simone runs out at seven minutes and six seconds. Lost a bit of his lead today, but you think he was worried about that. 12 days he led this tour before he finally came into Milan as winner of this race. And the feeling, well, you can't get a nicer feeling than to be an Italian and you are the champion in your own national tour. He was without doubt the best rider in this race simply because he won the tough mountain stages and if he wasn't able to win them, well, he was always there in second place. Yes, nobody could get rid of him and in this case, we can go home saying the best man really did win the Giro d'Italia. Paul, it wasn't just the style in which he won the race in time because he was so consistent he took the points race right to the end. That was a good battle on the last day, wasn't it? It was an unbelievable battle. In fact, this man was so dominant and so regular throughout the whole of the bike race, which is why at the end of the day, he came out with a very closely fought battle for that points competition. And in fact, it was only on the final day that we knew who was going to be the winner there. Exactly the same points as the man who challenged him, Stefano Garzelli. Garzelli coming up there on the last day with a great seventh place, but it went to Simone because he had three stage victories in this year's bike race. It's amazing we go all this way, but when we're talking seconds and equal points, it's quite ridiculous in a race like this, but it wasn't the same thing in the King of the Mountains, was it? Because the man that started off with the Avengers, he's won it before, uh, Freddy Gonzalez, he never let anybody ever have that jersey the whole tour. No, absolutely. Right from the very beginning of the Giro d'Italia, the legendary climbers from Colombia of the Celle Italia team came to the fore, leading out 
this man right here, Freddy Gonzalez, he went on to win almost every King of the Mountain sprint throughout the whole Giro d'Italia, not just on the climb themselves, the big mountains, but all the smaller ones too. So at the end, he had quite a comfortable lead. It was a hard fought, and Freddy Gonzalez did a great ride, adding to the legend from the Colombian climber. Yeah, you were impressed with Simone as well, weren't you, Bob? Oh, absolutely. After so much bitterness and disillusionment yeah. in the Giro last year, that he, he just kept that inside throughout the offseason, trained so hard, he prepared himself so perfectly, it was a complete annihilation of the Giro field, reminiscent of Bernard Eno, Fausto Coppi, and, and the great Eddie Merckx, and Lance Armstrong in the Tour de France as recently. Simone, a fantastic result, and he can uh, kick back now. He has a few weeks off until he does the Tour de France again. This, this summer. Yeah, well, the race coming to a very successful conclusion, especially if your name was Gilberto Simoni, and of course, if your name was Stefano Garcelli. He really did defy everything, and he held on to that second place, but he was a nervous man all day today. So, on the winner's podium then, it is Gilberto Simoni, who is the now the man who is in charge of the pink jersey until he comes back and tries to defend it next year. He was the champion in Milan today, he was all smiles, and my goodness me, he came back to this race to prove they were wrong to throw him out of it last year. He was exonerated from drug taking, he's come back and proven his point. Remember, you can see all of this and more highlights as we go through the defining moments next Thursday, June the 5th, of the Giro d'Italia, and that'll come to your screens at 8 p.m. Eastern and Pacific time. We'll enjoy reliving those moments with you. Now, don't forget, a big program tonight here on OLN, Global Extremes, Mount Everest Forerunner of Adventure. It's the successful summit of our Mount Everest team, and remember, that is tonight from 7 p.m. Eastern time here on OLN. Well, we'll keep you right up to date on our website. Come and see what OLN Adventure Television is up to, not just with the Giro d'Italia. Little messages there too from Bob Roll, Paul Schoen and me, Phil Liggett. And the address, there you are, OLNTV.com. Well, this is the last time. I'm indebted, of course, to my two experts who kept me on the straight and narrow for three weeks. And so, for Bob Roll and for Paul Schoen, I'm saying goodbye. Phil Liggett then wishing you well and leaving you with some sights and sounds of the Giro d'Italia.